Have you all been enjoying the Holy Spirit series that Pastor Barry's been going through? Has it been opening your eyes to who the Holy Spirit is? So we're going to continue that tonight. Or, whoa, it's this morning. We're going to continue that this morning. I'm used to speaking at night, so I'm going to continue that this morning. I want to do a quick recap of what we've been talking about, though. The week one, you can throw that graphic up as well. Week one, we talked about how it's he, not thee. Right? And so how Holy Spirit is not like a mist or a fog. I used to think Holy Spirit was like this thing that floated around. Oh, there he is in the distance. I kind of treated him as a weird uncle. Like if you, like I try to avoid him in the supermarket. Can't, don't make eye contact with him. If you do, he's going to come over and talk to us. He's probably drunk. That's how I viewed Holy Spirit. But here's the deal. It's not a the. He's not a weirdo because weird's actually a relative term anyway, right? What's weird for me may not be weird for James. Matter of fact, I know it's not. <laughs> so anyway talked about how Holy Spirit is a the, he's not a, or excuse me, he's a he, he's not a the. He's not some thing, he's a person and he loves us. And he's actually the very thing that Jesus sent us in this earth. And I believe personally that without Holy Spirit in your life, you can't fully walk in everything Jesus wants you to walk in. You can't fulfill the purposes of God in your life apart from Holy Spirit. So it's very crucial, very important that we find out just who Holy Spirit is and get rid of these wrong mindsets about who he is. So that was week one. He's a person. Week two talks about how being a person, he has a personality, right? Everybody has a different personality. Me and Holly are totally different people. Yep. And so <laughs> he's a person. He's got a personality. And it's not a weird personality once again. And week three, we talked about how he brings unity. And that was last week. Remember that? And Pastor Barry mentioned tongues. And he talked about how he brings unity. I, I find it fascinating. If you study church history and revival history, you'll find that when revival broke out, it was because there was unity. You're not going to find a moment in history where revival happened that everybody was all separated and then the Holy Spirit came. I love people that don't love people. No, that's not what happened. It's like people were unified together. And because of that, Holy Spirit was like, I can use that. Because together we're the body, right? And so I believe this really quickly. Revival happens when unity happens. And not just a unified a bunch of people who don't care about anything, but a unified group of people that have a personal hunger to see God manifest in the earth. So the, here's, the, here's the key. In your personal life, it's important that you cultivate a lifestyle of revival. And when you get here on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, your home fire group, or anywhere, you can bring that personal hunger into a corporate hunger and a unified thing, and watch Holy Spirit do something. So once again, you cannot fulfill the call of God in your life without Holy Spirit. You can't. And the only reason maybe some people don't like Holy Spirit is because they have the wrong idea. And so over the past three weeks, we've been unfolding and, and kind of revealing who Holy Spirit is in our life, and I'm going to give you something else about him. We tend, to, we tend to cancel things out when we look at Holy Spirit sometimes. Like He just brings this. He just brings that. But here's the deal. He brings so much. And I'm going to title today's message this, The Great Revealer. The Great Revealer. If you're taking notes, you can write that down. Because I believe the Holy Spirit reveals some stuff in our life. And I just want to give you that today. I'm believing for some impartation and some revelation. Not just a bunch of head knowledge that you'll forget when you leave the parking lot, but something you can actually take with you and live a transformed life. Amen? But before we do that, I'd like to pray a real spiritual prayer. <laughs> Holy Spirit, come. Okay, so. <laughs> you got your scuba gear on this morning? You got your, put on the whole scuba gear of God so you can dive deep into his word. I believe we're going deep. So you can either come with me or float on the surface with your sweet tea and your floaties. But I'm going deep, so we're going to make this happen. So go with me to 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians 2. How many of you love your Bible? You know what I love about teaching adults? I get to hear pages. I teach youth on Wednesday nights, and they just look at me like, go to 1 Corinthians. <laughs> Okay, no, I don't, they don't have their Bible. Anyway, so, I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. Leave me alone. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2. I'm just going to start reading. We're going to start in verse 1. And I, somebody say him. <laughs> and I, when I came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech 
or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Somebody said, that's good stuff. Man, we could just wrap up shop now and go home, feel encouraged. But I read this, and kind of one of the things that I noticed is Paul, he says, I came to you only with the message of Jesus. He didn't come with five ways to have a successful business. He didn't come with the tithing message. He didn't come with how to walk in supernatural signs and wonders. He came with the message of Jesus. I mean, there's a time for all these other things, and it's called discipleship, right? Learning to live life in the kingdom. I'm going to learn to tithe, and I'm going to learn to do these other things. I'm going to walk in signs and wonders and all these types of deals, but that's discipleship. And Paul says, I come to you with the message of Jesus. How many of you know that the message of Jesus, Jesus Christ, is foundational in who we are? And without him, we can't experience the abundant life, right? So it doesn't matter how, many, how, many, how much head knowledge you got, how many signs and wonders you say you, you perform. Without Jesus, it's all meaningless. Because he is the rock on which we stand. Everything else you stand on is sand, man. Look at somebody say, it's sand, man. <laughs> so he says, I, come to you, I came to you preaching Jesus. That was the first thing I told you. Because you need that. And I, I think this, just a, just a side note here, I believe oftentimes, we're, we're disciples in here, right? Yeah? Disciples of Jesus, disciples of Christ. And if you're not, oh, you're going to be, it's going to be good too. So anyway, what was I saying? Oh, too often, what we do as disciples is we go out into the world and we preach discipleship principles and we call it evangelism. When evangelism is actually preaching Jesus. So oftentimes what we do is we know all these things, like, okay, all these things operate in the kingdom. What we try to do is we try to preach that in an unsaved world and call that evangelism. But the key is this. We need to bring them Jesus. We need to reveal Jesus and how we live and what we say. And the live is actually super important because how many of you know people are paying attention to how you live more than what you're saying? Matter of fact, what you say should be uh, proven in your lifestyle. I believe in healing. Well, that should be seen in your life. I believe that God is good. That should be seen in your life. If it's not... It's not actually belief. It's just something you're saying. Because I believe how you live your life comes from what you truly believe. So people are watching you more, or they're watching how you live your life more than what you're telling them. And it's funny because you can't bring heaven to earth in public if you live like hell in private. So Paul came with a message of Jesus, right? I got paper notes this morning. I usually use my iPad, but... Going old school, because the apostles, oh, 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 hold on. The apostles used computer paper. Can I get a napkin? <laughs> Don't tell Pastor Barry I spilled coffee on his podium. <laughs> Just going to put that right there. It's on video. So we'll use second service. All right. <laughs> so Jesus, oh, thank you. Jesus is the, I got 36 minutes. We got to hurry this up. And by that I mean, no, we don't. So we have Jesus is the door to the abundant life, right? And there's a verse that says, hey, the, 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 the road is narrow that leads to life. The road is wide that leads to destruction. And I kind of viewed that as, as the Christian life being this really big game of operation. Like, you don't touch the sides or God's going to zap you. But you know what I mean? Like, or this game of, of bowling where you put the bowling bumpers up because you're terrible at bowling and people judge you. But I kind of, I kind of envision the Christian life as this narrow walk through life. And, and you, there's just no freedom. But here's the deal. Jesus is the door. And once you enter in through the narrow road and through the door of Jesus, there is so much open field. So many, it's a whole new world. A dazzling place that we never knew. This one's way up here. It's crystal clear. Now I'm in a whole new world with you. Mm, right? So you enter in through this gate that is Jesus, and you get to go into this huge area and live the abundant life. Right? But it's only through Jesus. So I'm going to give you five things this morning. The Holy Spirit reveals. And all of this 
is built upon the foundation that is Jesus, just like Paul says. I came to you in the beginning talking about Jesus, just Jesus, because he's what we need, right? So let's keep going. Verse 6, yet among the mature, we do impart wisdom. Although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away, but we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. Wow. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined what God has prepared for those who love them. The first thing I believe Holy Spirit reveals, and these aren't in, 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 blah, aren't in any particular order, but reading this, first thing is, he reveals hidden wisdom. And that kind of sounds new agey if, you're, if you look at it with the wrong eyes, but he reveals hidden wisdom. It says in uh, verse 7, we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. And there's actually a proverb that says, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, the honor of kings to search it out. So I believe that there's so much that we can tap into in Jesus, entering through Jesus. There's so much we can tap into because God hides things not, not so we don't find them, but so we get to find them. So it's like salvation is very surface level. So a lot of Christians like to, like to hang out on the top. They got their floaties and their sweet tea. Oh, the sun is shining. Everything's great. So we're just kind of floating on the surface of grace. If grace is a sea, we're just kind of floating there. But God says, you know what? I've equipped you to dive. You don't have to just hang out on the surface because there's so much more to know about who I am. There's so much more to understand. There's so much more to find out. Diving further in, not away from the gospel, but further into the gospel. Does that make sense? So there are some things that God wants us to find that are deeper than the surface. He's calling us to deeper and greater things. Remember when Jesus said, hey, I got to go, guys, but it's all good because I'm sending the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit, I'm sending him. He's going he's gonna, to he's gonna be awesome, and you're going to have him, and you're going to do greater things than I because I'm leaving. He's calling us to greater things. He's, he wants us to go deeper. And Holy Spirit reveals hidden wisdom. He, he reveals stuff. <laughs> you know the difference between revelation and information? Information doesn't bring transformation. But revelation and impartation brings transformation. How many of you know... If you take a bunch of notes and just get a bunch of head knowledge, most of it will be gone by the time you leave the parking lot. And so when you come here on a Sunday, or any day for that matter, you're not just coming to fill your head with knowledge, you're coming to fill your heart with truth. So revelation, I, I want revelation, I want Holy Spirit to breathe on the words of the speaker so something is revealed to me, bringing transformation into my life, because information has never transformed someone's life. The truth Revelation is what transforms someone's life. How many of you know that sometimes you're like, let's just use math class because it's awful. So you're in like algebra, algebra, whatever, whatever math, they start putting letters in there, whatever that is. So you're sitting in class and you're like, okay, I don't get it. But one day it clicks. What happened? Something was revealed and now you understand. You don't just have the head knowledge of the formulas, but you understand how it works. Holy Spirit brings understanding. He reveals the hidden wisdom. He brings revelation. So it's not just a bunch of, okay, this, this, this. No, it's, it's who I am now. It becomes a part of me and I can live my life. If you're having trouble living your life based on what the Bible says, maybe it's because you haven't received the revelation of God to walk out a transformed lifestyle. So the answers we need are found in the Holy Spirit. And with that, he reveals hidden wisdom. I believe that all the answers you need in life are found in him. And so, I mean, you can go to a pastor because when pastors speak most, di most days on a good day, he's speaking with the power of the Holy Spirit. Or, I mean, when people come up to me and they ask me, hopefully I'm speaking through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, but my hope is that I, I don't want to just get a bunch of head knowledge or, and because if I do that, I'm just a Pharisee. Pharisees didn't have the Holy Spirit. They knew everything about the Bible. They didn't live a transformed lifestyle. They got all caught up in formulas, they didn't know the Holy Spirit, and they missed the very Messiah that was supposed to save them. Why? Because they didn't have the revelation of the Scriptures. They just had the head knowledge of the Scriptures. That is good. That's a good word. I 
I should have put my phone on airplane mode. I'm getting all kinds of stuff now. Just turn that over. Verse 10. These things. What things? Let's back up a second. It says, uh, as it is written, what no eye has seen nor ear heard nor the heart of man imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Next verse, verse 10. These things we just described, God has revealed to us through the Spirit. Once again, through the Spirit we have this revelation. For the Spirit, oh, I love this. Mm, somebody say, this is awesome. Spirit searches all things, even the depths. Somebody say depths of God. Searches all things. You don't have to repeat that, but thank you, Jackie. He <laughs> searches all things, even the depths of God. Here, here's the deal. Do you know what a search engine is? So like Google or Yahoo or Bing. Those are the only important ones, right? Actually, Google's probably the only important one. So on Google, <laughs> I man, I have all the information in the world on my phone because I have Google. So if I, if I want to know the answer to a question, I don't have to sit and ponder and meditate for hours. I just go to Google, just tap it in. That's kind of a little too close to home for some of us. I don't need to read the Bible and learn. I'll just Google it. Oh, my goodness. But anyway, so... <laughs> Google is a search engine, so if I have questions and I need answers, I, I go to Google. Let's just say I want to look at some squirrels, so I go to Google, type in squirrels. Google searches the entire World Wide Web, finds articles about squirrels, pictures of squirrels, people doing squirrely things, and it pops up right in front of me on my computer screen everything, that I, everything that's attached to squirrels. So, so Google searches the entire World Wide Web. I kind of I think of Holy Spirit as the ultimate search engine. He searches the depths of God. So when we like type in google.holyspirit.com, he reveals all this stuff like, Holy Spirit, what's, my, what's the plan for my life? And Holy Spirit searches the depths of God and pops it up in front of our face. Here it is. And so we have, we have the ability to dive off into this this depth of God, and with that, I have something, some information I'm excited to tell you. I believe that the second thing the Holy Spirit reveals, at least in this way, is he reveals heaven's creativity. Because he searches the depths of God, right? And God's nature is creative. I look at these paintings, I'm like, well, how do you even imagine this? Well, they've tapped into heaven's creativity. There's a story. Go with me real quick to Exodus. I'm going to take an intentional rabbit trail here. Exodus 31, 1 through 6. Exodus 31. There's a, this is a story about a, a unique character named Bezalel. And Bezalel was actually the very first documented person to be filled with the Spirit of God. I'm going to read it for you. Exodus 31, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, the tribe of Judah, and I filled him with the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs, to work in gold, silver, and bronze, and cutting stones for setting, and in carving wood, to work in every craft. And behold, I have appointed him with him, Oheliab, the son of that guy, of the tribe of Dan, and I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you. This is the first documented person in the scriptures that says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit or with Holy Spirit, and he was an artist. So Holy Spirit was in Bezalel, because of that, Bezalel was able to create everything that God wanted made in the earth. How many of you know that God wants things, even today, to be created? But he wants you to do it. And he's given you Holy Spirit, who reveals heaven's creativity in your life. You may say, I'm not creative. Well, that's a lie. Somebody say, that's a lie. Maybe you can't paint, but maybe you made the blueprints for the manufacturing company that printed the canvas that has the painting. Maybe... That's all I have. So <laughs> maybe you don't play instruments, but maybe you uh, did something else. I don't know. Maybe it, it, it's, it's in, <laughs> creativity is not just what's up here. There's so everything can be creative. And the Holy Spirit comes and he fills you and he, he reveals heaven's creativity. As you know, 
This is interesting. Jana turned me on to a uh, podcast. It's called uh, Makers of Mystics, and it talks about some of these things, but, and it's amazing. Did you know that the word inspire at its very root means to be breathed into? So think about this. Bezalel was an artist. He was a creator, and he had the spirit of God. Spirit of God is actually breath in the Old Testament. The breath of God. So he was inspired by God to create. Listen to this. John 20. Jesus, before he leaves, says to his disciples, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. What's he doing? He's inspiring them. He's inspiring them to be creative. He says, so have I been, I've been sent in the world. I'm sending you out just in the same way. Go and create heaven on earth. Be inspired, with me? Be inspired by Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit and go into the earth and create. Holy Spirit reveals heaven's creativity. And I believe that God has new things he wants in this earth, but he wants us to create them. He's given you ideas, you plans that you are meant to do to see heaven come to earth, right? Uh, God wanted a temple made in the Old Testament. He used Bezalel to make everything in the temple. God wants you to do things in life so that you see heaven come to earth. You've been inspired by Holy Spirit to reveal heaven's creativity, and he's revealed that to you, amen? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so yesterday we were driving from... Bethel to, uh, or excuse me, from Reading to Oakland to leave on a plane, and, and me and Jacob were riding together, and I'm just driving, and Jacob's kind of sitting in this like silence for 10 minutes, and I hear this, whoa. <laughs> My driving's not that bad, dude. I said, what's going on? He said, huh, what a, a re- I'm going to give this credit to him. He said, there's nothing new under the sun, but heaven's not under the sun. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. And we don't pull from earth. We pull from heaven. There's nothing new here, but you know what? Heaven's not here. Or excuse me. There's nothing new under the sun, but heaven is not under the sun. And we operate from heaven to earth. And so everything, God creates all things. He, all things he makes new. We've been, we've been called to create and create new things. And I'm tired. We don't need to use the excuse, well, there's nothing new under the sun. That's true. But I don't operate under the sun. I operate from heaven to earth. So Holy Spirit reveals heaven's creativity. And actually, chapter 3, which is after chapter 2, obviously, it talks about the, divi- the divisions of the church. And if you look at the church today, it's, it's, it, there's different ones in this town, and each one of them have different creativity. But too often what we do is we say, you don't look like me, and so we need to be divided. But here's the deal. Just because there's diversity in the body does not mean it should cause division. With each church reveals a new aspect of who God is. Now they're preaching against Jesus, then we're not talking about that. Okay, We're not, we're not, we're not talking about getting rid of core values of Christianity, but we're talking about just because, uh, let's say, Stonewater looks not like us doesn't mean that we're different. No, my goodness, no. We've both tapped into an aspect of God that we're revealing to this community. Mm, I am, brother. Verses 11 and 12. This is good, too. So first thing, he reveals uh, hidden wisdom. Second thing, he reveals heaven's creativity. Third thing, is what I'm about to tell you. Verses 11 of 1 Corinthians 2 say this. For who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? It's pretty true. I don't know James' thoughts. <clears throat> James' thoughts. And James doesn't know my thoughts. That's good. Let's keep it that way, right? Cool. I don't know your thoughts. You don't know my thoughts. Praise God. Unless there's a prophet in here. Joanne's probably tapping into my mind right now. Get out of my head. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so... I don't know your thoughts. You don't know my thoughts. And then it goes on to say, so, <laughs> so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And you're like, oh, bummer. Can't know the thoughts of God either because I know my thoughts, don't know your thoughts, can't know his thoughts, blah, 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 depression. <laughs> but there's interesting, and actually, that's actually paralleled in Romans 11. It says, oh, the depths and riches and Wisdom of knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his, ins- that word, inscrutable, his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord, who has been his counselor, who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? It's a good verse, but 
Verse 12, of, after it says, Who knows, no one knows the thoughts of a person other than the spirit of that person. No one knows the thoughts of God other than the spirit of God. Verse 12 is the best news in the world. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us. I believe this. Holy Spirit reveals the thoughts of God. Amen. You don't have to go through life wondering, what is God thinking about right now? Because Holy Spirit reveals that to you. What is God thinking about me? Well, Holy Spirit revealed that to you too. What does God think about the purposes and the plans in my life? Holy Spirit can reveal that to you, and he will. Because we have the ability to tap into the thoughts and the mind of God because Holy Spirit searches the depths of God and pulls it out, gives it to you. Who knows the thoughts of a person other than the spirit of that person? Who knows the thoughts of God other than the spirit of God? But we have not received the spirit of the world. We receive this blah. If you receive the spirit of God, Holy Spirit, letting us tap into the thoughts, the imagination, and the mind of God. Come on, somebody. That's good news. If you're stuck in a rut, I don't know how to get out of this. You don't. He does. He'll give it to you. Practically, how does that work? I don't know. Let's move on. <laughs> but get in your prayer closet and pray and allow Holy Spirit to reveal God's will for your life. I don't know that God's will is so unattainable and untangible and you just is way over there and I don't understand God. We have the ability to understand him because we have his spirit. So he reveals the thoughts of God. And the Holy Spirit's actually the one living in you. Did you know that? The Holy Spirit's the one living in you. Did you know that? Jesus isn't living in you. I mean, it's good Christian lingo. Jesus lives in my heart. And I get the idea, but Jesus is seated in, in heaven with the Father. The Holy Spirit is the one who is sent to live in us and reveal everything to us. Amen? So verse 3. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. And I had a footnote in my Bible that says there's another uh, translation, or there's another fragments of uh, part. There's other stuff that, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Other, let's just do translate. Other translations that says, or interpreting spiritual truths in spiritual language. So I'm going to read that again because it just got really confusing for somebody. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. And I believe this is where revelation kicks in, the revelation of God, the revealing that Holy Spirit has for us. No, it's not just let's fill our head with, with knowledge and that's it. I just have an, a head full of knowledge about God. But we have spiritual language that's revealed to us and actually becomes a part of who we are. And so that's what brings transformation in my life. Once again, it's not just a bunch of information. It's revelation that brings transformation, and it's a sensation in my life. Amen? Amen. So he reveals the thoughts of God. Are we still good? Can I go a little further? T.D. Jake says that I like. Can I go a little deeper? Okay. So go with me to Acts 8. Acts 8, 20, just do, yeah, 8, 26. Acts 8, 26. I'm going to give you two more points, and then we'll be done. Acts 8, 26. This is a story of a guy named Philip. Anybody knows Philip? He's the guy that teleported. We'll get to that in a minute. It's about Philip, and Philip was sent to do something. I'm going to read it. Now, an angel of the Lord said to Philip, rise and go to the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. Notice that Holy Spirit didn't tell uh, Philip all the information. He just told him where to go. Some of you have not taken, taken, that's not a word. Some of you have not taken a step because you want to see the whole picture. But if Holy Spirit reveals the whole picture, maybe you'll try to navigate around stuff you don't like. So he doesn't do, he doesn't reveal the whole picture to you. He reveals step by step. He directs the steps of man, right? So he reveals a part so you don't get a, like, you get this huge vision like, oh, I'll, I know how to get there. I'll just take this way. No, Holy Spirit wants to take you this way because with every step, there comes growth. Amen? So anyway, he rose and went, and there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. And he had come to Jerusalem to worship and was, and was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit of the Lord said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. So at this point in time, Philip had, had somewhere to go. He had somewhere to be. If you have a place to go, don't worry about what's going to happen when you get there. Just be led and go there. 
And when you get there, Holy Spirit's going to tell you, because that's what happened in the story. Philip gets to this destination, he gets to this desert place, and Holy Spirit says, all right, now that you're here, go to this eunuch. He's reading the prophet Isaiah. You still with me? Spirit told Philip to go and join the eunuch. And so verse 30 says this. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, oh, this is so good. Do you understand what you are reading? In other words, has this been revealed to you yet? Because how many of you know we need Holy Spirit to understand God's word? Without Holy Spirit, this is just a book. It will not transform your life. But because we have the Holy Spirit, he gives us eyes to see and ears to hear the word of God. So at this point, this guy's just reading a dusty old scroll in Isaiah. And, and, and Philip says, do you understand what you're reading? And then the guy says this, how can I unless someone guides me? or leads me. And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. So would we agree at this point that the Holy Spirit is leading Philip? Okay. So it says the verse that this guy was reading, the eunuch, he was reading to himself, was this passage right here. It's such a good passage. It's talking about Jesus. And it's uh, verses 32. It says, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opens not his mouth. And in his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Now that is amazing. That is a good verse. But without Holy Spirit revealing that to us, we don't know what that means, do we? And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I asked, does the prophet say this, about himself or about somebody else? Pretty standard question. If you don't know what you're reading, like, what, what's he talking about, Philip? And then it says this, Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. So I believe, fourth thing the Holy Spirit does, is he reveals God's word. I just said that. Reveals God's word. This guy was reading a scroll. He had no idea what he was talking about. The Holy Spirit came, and he was with Philip, and through Philip's words, revelation came and was imparted to this man. Remember in 1 Corinthians, uh, earlier up, it says we impart this so we can impart revelation from the Holy Spirit if we're led by him. Does that make sense? Not just a bunch of information, but revelation. And so it, uh, Holy Spirit is using Philip to unlock the secrets of this verse in this man's life. He's revealing God's word. We need Holy Spirit to reveal the Bible lest we turn into a Pharisee. Without Holy Spirit, we get caught up in religion. We get caught up in form and all kinds of stuff. If you think about it, Jesus came through rocking the minds of the Pharisees, which were the people who they thought they knew the Scriptures. But they didn't have Holy Spirit to unlock and open up their minds to actually receive what God was talking about. They just knew the book. They didn't know the author. And the, and the purpose of this is not to just to memorize a bunch of stuff. It's random. It's to get to know the author. So we need Holy Spirit to reveal the book. This, and he does. The Bible was made to need him. Have you ever come to a verse, you're like, what does that mean? Matter of fact, I just read something totally different in the verse before that. Why are these contradictions in here? There is no God. Well, what happens? Well, they didn't allow Holy Spirit to reveal these scriptures. Like, take, for instance, this verse that says, hey, Jesus came to give the abundant life. We can get excited. We can shout about that. There's another verse that says he became uh, poor so we could be rich, right? And we like that, too. That's a coffee cup verse. I'm going to be proud about that. But there's also a verse that says, hey, it's very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Matter of fact, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to get into heaven. And you look at that and you're like, I don't like that, so let's go back to the other one. But here's the deal. Holy Spirit's trying to tell you something. When your mind gets offended by the word, it's because Holy Spirit's trying to reveal something to your heart. That's a good word right there. Man, that's not even in my notes. So he reveals God's word. And I think the last thing I have, which is to me the most important thing, is he reveals Jesus. Think about this. Jesus came to reveal the Father, but the Holy Spirit came to reveal Jesus. In this verse, in this, in this story, where Philip's talking to this eunuch, and, he's reveal, and, and Holy Spirit's revealing the scriptures through Philip to this eunuch, Jesus is revealed. Savior of the world is revealed. And so oftentimes what we want to do is we want to try to 
manipulate people into loving Jesus. Mm. But Holy Spirit wants to reveal Jesus because here's the deal. If someone saw Jesus in his perfection, they wouldn't want to not choose him. But so often what we try to do is we try to just like go to their head and say, here's Jesus, now think about it. But Holy Spirit wants to reveal to the heart how much they need him and how crucial he is to life. Does that make sense? So Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. John 16 tells me that. I still have many, this is Jesus talking, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. Holy Spirit, when somebody has a salvation, when somebody gets saved, Holy Spirit just revealed Jesus to them. I'm not talking about they said a prayer in a parking lot and just recited a card. Those are valid in some points, but it's not always the key because the declaration isn't just a declaration. It's actually an overflow of what the heart currently now believes. So when it says in Romans, uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, the believe in your heart is actually more important than the confession because that's where it's birthed. But next step is to confess it because beliefs, um, what you say needs to come from what you truly believe. Does that make sense? hope that made sense. And so Holy Spirit reveals Jesus. When someone gets saved, it's because Jesus has been revealed by Holy Spirit. There is no limit to how Holy Spirit can reveal Jesus. He can reveal him at somebody reading a tract, or he can be revealed in a painting. And in that moment, they look at that painting, oh my God, you are good. One of my favorite verses is Romans 1 where it says, God is, is very, I'm going to butcher it, but he's very clearly seen in the earth, so no one has an excuse not to know him. So there's no limit to how Holy Spirit can reveal Jesus. Your life can actually reveal Jesus to others. Did you know that? Your life is actually a louder sermon than your lips. Once again, it's not about just about what you say. It's about how you're living. People are watching you because there's nothing that's going to transform this earth that's just available in words. It needs to be lived out as well. Does that make sense? I'll end with this. Holy Spirit wants to speak through you. Do you know that? So we have, the purpose of this series is to get you to believe that Holy Spirit is so crucial. He's not weird. He's not some floaty thing. He's not the weird uncle who's drunk all the time. But he's a, ne- a necessary part of the Godhead. It's not Father, Son, Holy Spirit. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We need all of them. As a matter of fact, Holy Spirit is the very power that we need to walk out a transformed life in this earth. We don't need a bunch of religious stuff to tell us what to do. We have the Spirit of God living inside of us, allowing us to transform the way we live. So Holy Spirit wants to speak through you. And if you back up in in, in Acts 8, where Philip was talking to this unit, before this unit gets revelation of Jesus, it says this, verse 35, we just read it, then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scriptures, he told him the good news about Jesus. I believe The Holy Spirit wants to speak through you, but it's up to you to open your mouth. I'm going to say that again. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, young or not as young. (laughs) He wants to speak to you, but he wants you to open your mouth. It's that way with everything. Holy Spirit's not just going to, and you're going to, it's not going to happen. He wants you to open your mouth. He wants you to speak. It's that way with tongues. It's that way with everything. He's not going to come on you and just force you into something because that's not what he does. He wants you, in faith, to open your mouth and let Holy Spirit work through you. Does that make sense? So Holy Spirit wants to speak through you, but you need to open your mouth. And a lot of us are waiting for Holy Spirit just to move through us, but Holy Spirit's waiting for us to open our mouths. He's waiting for us to pick up the paintbrush. He's waiting for us to, 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 to do something so he can bless it and use it. Does that make sense? Because how many of you know Philip is not just being overtaken, he's being possessed, and oh, just spitting out stuff. No, he's, he's opening his mouth, he's being obedient, and Holy Spirit's in him uh, breathing 
on his words, and that's revelation to this eunuch. Does that make sense? So when you open yourself up to Holy Spirit and allow him to work, you will see this world transformed, and you will see the goodness of God revealed, huh? and it's going to be awesome. And so I want to do this. I felt this yes, or this week as I was just thinking about today. Uh, if you've never actually had Jesus revealed to you, I'm not talking about... You, you, you said a prayer, and, and now there's no transformation, but you, you, don't know, you, you, you don't know the goodness of Jesus if that has not been revealed to you. I just want to take a moment right now to provide an opportunity for that. You don't have to stand up, come down front. But if that has never been revealed to you, Holy Spirit right now wants to reveal Jesus to some people. And if you already know him, don't get saved again, but dive deeper into the goodness that he is. Let, allow Holy Spirit to reveal more of his goodness to you. Let, that you would know just how much more saved you are than when you thought. So right now, Holy Spirit, I just pray that you would reveal to every heart and every mind just how good you are and how good Jesus is. Holy Spirit, just reveal God's nature. God, Holy Spirit, just come and invade this place right now in Jesus' name. Let's all just stand up right now. Let's put our hands out in front of us and say these words. Holy Spirit, I want everything you have for me. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus and God's nature to me right now. Reveal to me the hidden wisdom of the kingdom. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, I need you. 